All right, what is up everyone? So today we're doing a video that is a little bit different than the other videos we've done so far on the channel. So you have to let me know if you guys would like to see me do more content like this before or like in the future. So today's video, we're actually going to be reacting to the 2014 World Championship Finals. Now, uh, obviously this match is a very popular match and I thought that it could be interesting for me looking at it because a lot of players retrospective you get, um, you know, obviously it's the either the casual perspective and like the competitive perspective you usually get is for people who were actively playing in that era or people who were, you know, obviously around. And like, obviously I've done my homework. I know the history around that time. You know, I know what was used um, around that time, but I, I don't have the same necessarily. Uh, I don't have the same association to it that like a lot of the older players do where it's like, oh, yeah, like I watched this or like. Oh, yeah, like I was directly interacting with these players. So for me, it kind of gives like a good like, I think a good interesting perspective where I can look at it from my side of, you know, as a competitive player right now and look at one of the most influential and historical matches in VGC history. If you guys don't know why this was so influential, Seijun Park from South Korea actually ends up winning with the Pachirisu. Uh, spoilers, if you didn't know, I mean, I feel like everyone knows, but um, it ended up being a huge influence on VGC because uh, typically, you know, we see a lot of like standard meta teams win and Pachirisu winning was definitely like a kind of change up from the norm. There was nothing really ever like that again. There were definitely some like interesting choices and things that were different from future world champs, but nothing really to the same caliber of what happened here. And, uh, you know, it's a very truly memorable part of VGC history. So I thought it would be interesting to cover it. So with that being said, we're going to go right into it. Okay. The overlay was like so different too back then. Um, when you know, uh, VGC was also different. Also change that a little bit. Even the setup, like so different. See, so these guys too as well. Um, were literally like the big uh casters right they were always on everything i mean scott glaza now um which is cool is now he's doing stuff with you know uh like the analyst couch stuff like that he also came back for i think vancouver regionals in 2022 uh, but he hasn't been seen for a while evan i think uh, I, I don't know fully the situation with evan but he hasn't really been casting so he might have just left casting might not be doing it anymore but these guys were literally on every single old vgc broadcast from like 2013 to like 2015 it was like all them pretty much um and really in 2016 is when aaron came onto the you know came on and like kind of established himself as one of the main casters as well along with other people ray ray brizzo uh, other people as well but yeah um these guys are literally like the uh they're pretty much like the premier vgc casters at the time right like they're literally like the casters that everyone thinks about when like we talk about old VGC. The even the setup so different from the modern setup. Like VGC competitive has come so far. Sixty people in worlds? Oh, yeah. Okay, so back then, the qualification system was a little bit different, too. Um, now, because it's, like, you know, obviously, CP is really easy to get. I think back then, it used to be, like, top eight of each region CP qualifies for Worlds or something like that. So, like, Worlds was obviously way smaller because of that. So, it was a lot more of an exclusive event. And now, it's, like, if you get 400 CP, you qualify, right? So, there's a difference there. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at the list real quick. Yo. <laughs> you guys can't see. Hold on. I'll uh, rip my boy Colin. Battle room. Unfortunate. Top four in the world, baby. All right, I don't know who this guy is. Um, Seijun, obviously, guns to the bracket. Um, this is actually Sekium here. Um, so he beats Sekium. Then he... Uh, yeah, he beats Sekium. And then he plays versus Colin. He beats Colin. Then he's in finals. Um, Jody, he goes through Lee. Uh, you guys might know him as the current... Like, he's current VGC caster. Um, he's really solid back then. And then also to um, Marcus. I don't actually know much about Marcus, so I can't really comment on him as a player. But, um, you know, Jody obviously was a quote-unquote new player at this point, right? Uh, less so new, just more so, like, you know, he had a lot more to prove at the time. So, in that case, you know, this was, like, a huge performance, I think, for him. I mean, like, Sejun was the favorite to win i'd say right like he had a lot more 
achievements and everything so that obviously skews it a little bit I skip a little bit ahead because just because i don't want to take too long on the pre-match uh, so interesting thing about jody's team right like so again like it wasn't his only performance but like he uh placed well in like another i think this is a grassroots tournament i'm not totally sure what apex is i believe it's a grassroots tournament um his team was a team i think that was also used by angel miranda if i'm not mistaken and like that group um and this team uh was really interesting right it had haban Barry salamence at this point you have to remember like even though fairies were good like it wasn't to the levels like it is now with like the tapus even with dynamax right like fairy moves are a little bit better but like yeah um until like basically like all of early vgc dragon types just kind of reigned like really dominant just because they were just like a really strong type in general so literally like what dragons would have to worry about is like other dragons so like salamence just ran haban berry right um to cover for that i think it was specifically for opposing draco meteors obviously dragon claw guard top as well um you know some coverage that way obviously too like i'm speaking off of like what i can gather from what, looking back at this format um there are other people who are probably more qualified or like no fully um rotom you know with the support citrus set with will wisp this is something commonly you see on like some rotoms today with like you know wash or heat but you don't actually see this too much or you don't see mo as much as you did back then so mo's kind of fallen off since then and the interesting thing with this team too is it was a double mega team i believe it was a mega charizard and also a mega lucario right um mega lucario can do a bunch of damage um you know obviously it hits really hard and then you have charizard um charizard was probably the best mega um back then if i remember correctly mostly just because of like how strong it was and you have to remember at this point like there wasn't mega mance there wasn't like some of these other important megas so yeah like charizard was the strongest mega by far if i remember correctly then you have garchomp garchomp's obviously a really solid meta staple within these regional decks formats at this point there's like not really a better dragon to outperform it and like the ground dragon coverage is just really strong you also you, or like not necessarily the ground dragon coverage the ground dragon type and then you also have like the rock coverage then tyranitar tyranitar has always been a premier like weather changer in formats especially in regional decks so even in national decks right so i'm not surprised it was used skip the sagen's team sagen's team was interesting so i think his team uh a lot of people misunderstand the pachirisu as like being like he's using his favorite so um if i'm not mistaken on how it went um pachirisu actually became his favorite after he won worlds with it or like rather it was, like it was something like that right or maybe it was his favorite pokemon but like it was convenient that he was able to use it i forgot the exact logic so sagen's team was interesting because with sagen's team right um he ended up, uh, you know, obviously having a team that utilized the Mega Gyarados, which actually arguably was more creative than Pachirisu, but people don't really talk about that because, like, I mean, obviously everyone looks at Pachirisu, right? Like, it, it was the start of the show, no denying, right? But, you know, you have some other strong stuff, like, you know, Talonflame obviously doing a bunch of damage. You have Telepathy, Scarf, or not, yeah, I think it was Telepathy, Scarf, Gardevoir. Um, that just pairs well with Chomp because then you can go for Earthquake next to it, right? Um, and then you also have like Gothitelle with the trapping plus intimidate, you know, you can use a mega Gyarados. I think the mega Gyarados was actually the coolest thing about this team. Um, cause you can really take advantage of like, like it's kind of utilization. And then the, you know, the final Mon Pachirisu, the one that everyone remembers. So really interesting. People always think that Seijun was the first one to use Pachirisu. I believe Angel Miranda used, uh, Pachirisu first, but he did not use the same Pachirisu that Seijun used. Um, Angel Miranda used Ion Deluge, Deluge Pachirisu first. Um, and what that does is it change moves into electric type. So basically Pachirisu could like Volt absorb the moves. Uh, it could like absorb the moves. Uh, that being said though, the more, you know, um, obviously the set that Seijun ran actually, like that was more optimal for this tournament was Super Fang, Follow Me, and uh, Nuzzle. So like you could pretty much paralyze, you could have their health, like you could do a bunch with that, right? So like that was the main factor into what Seijun was trying to do with this team. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. There is a lot of talking, so we're going to have to skip ahead to the finals. Alright, so they sit down. So you have to like imagine, too, like, Jody's probably feeling a lot of pressure, because this is like... Okay, so it's tough to explain, because, like, I guess stakes were different back then, but, like, it would be like sitting across from Wolf in, like, the World's Finals, or, like, someone like a really established player that you know is really good. Um... Probably how John felt playing versus Wolf actually in 2016 World's Finals. Like, there's a lot of pressure, right? Um, especially if you're a newer player or like you're newer to this stage. And also, too, you know, um, you have someone who's established themselves. They've been in the finals before or they've like been in Cup before and this is finally their time. Like, I'm sure everyone playing versus Edu this world in 2022 probably felt very similar. <laughs> 
Oh, you see, yeah, they even say it. It's really funny, you know, the Pachirisu keeps falling over. I think they did just play the favorite here, though. I mean, he certainly got the experience. Uh, it's hard to argue against it here. And I think that's some of the fun of this matchup. Uh, whenever you go into a match like this with one really accomplished player, you expect him to come out on top. But we've seen all weekend that's not always what happens. Uh, a lot of the players... That's so funny, man. <laughs> you spend more time setting up the Pachirisu than playing the game. <laughs> or, like, getting ready for team preview. There's so much vamping actually on this. It's not really the caster's fault. They were probably waiting for the setup, but all right, let's go to team preview. So, to me, like Jody has to take Salamence here. Um, you are pressured by like Gardevoir, right? But I do think that realistically, with Salamence, like you put on so much pressure versus Adrian's team. You neuter the Talonflame, right? You have the Intimidate on Talonflame. You have the Intimidate on the Gyarados. You have the Intimidate on the Garchomp. And then what you can do as well is utilize your Tyranitar versus this team. Because if we look at this team, right, the only thing that really beats this Tyranitar is Garchomp and uh, Gardevoir in some cases, right? Like Gyarados can as well, but like it's kind of tricky for Gyarados, especially if you have Intimidate, right? So like, let's say you're leading like Tyranitar and Salamence, right? Like you immediately get Intimidate on anything. If they lead Gardevoir, it's a little awkward. So you could theoretically keep Tyranitar in the back as well. So you're not like pressured by that. Um... But yeah, like it gives you options, right? And I think that Tyranitar in general, like because it's Scarf, especially, it has Ice Punch. So it can Ice Punch to deal with Garchomp. It can Rock Slide to deal with Talonflame. It can Rock Slide to deal with Gyarados. It can, uh, you know, obviously it has its partners to deal with Gardevoir. Plus like Rock Slide Chip is still a thing. Then, you know, Pachirisu is not really doing much to it besides paralyzing it. And then Gothitelle is not doing anything to it. So I think on Sajun's end, you never take Gothitelle here. Because even though the trapping is cute, like that would force you to take Gyarados. And like, I think that inherently gives you worse odds and i think like seeing seijun bias towards like pachirisu obviously in this world's finals makes a lot of sense because it gives you the ability to redirect a lot of these strong moves that uh, jody can run out uh or you know use and also redirects will-o-wisp which is also on the uh modem row or modem row rotom mo um but yeah so yeah leads so actually, I think um, Jody's lead makes even more sense. Um, well, actually, I don't really know. So here's the drawback to Jody's lead here, right? So this is the thing. So I think when you lead Tyranitar and you lead Charizard, you pressure the immediate Ice Punch into Garchomp, which is big, right? The problem that you have is that by turning on the uh, Sun, you immediately like turn off the Sand. So Tyranitar is taking way more damage. Right now, the alternative play you have here to kind of balance this out, right, is swap in Salamence for Charizard because swapping in Salamence for Zard, Moonblast probably isn't going into Charizard anyways. You also cover for the Rock Slide coming out as well, and then you know Moonblast is going into Titar. So potentially, what you could do: swap in Rotomo, swap in the Salamence. You eat up the Moonblast on the Rotomo. You probably get the Citrus Berry uh, after the Rock Slide, and then the Rock Slide connects on the Ments. You could protect Ments and like do something from there. The only tricky thing here is that if you're letting Gardevoir get too much momentum here, it's bad, but you also can't necessarily just leave Charizard in here because then you just get sniped by Rock Slide. So Sajun's on lead is like, like on paper, Sajun's lead is like way better than Jody's is. Um, now, the tricky thing is, is like, how do you position out of this when you're Jody, right? Um, so... I mean, the commentators even say it too, right? Like, it's it's definitely, like, a tricky position. Also, too, like, being able to click, like, Earthquake Dazzle with Gardevoir is also really nice. But, like, you're probably clicking Rock Slide here always. I wonder, like, how does Jody get out of this without, like, taking a ton of damage, though? I don't think there's a way to get out of this without taking a ton of damage, right? The battle time was also really interesting. It didn't come into play in these matches, but, like, um, it's definitely something that can make a difference. You probably swap, yeah. You probably double swap, like I said. Oh, protect is also safe. Oh, is he just gonna go for an ice punch? He might just go for an ice punch here. Okay. Ice punch. Oh, Sonage is good too. Interesting. I didn't really think about that, but like, actually, Sonage is like not a bad move, especially too because you love the rock slide, right? Yeah, I kind of like that play. I I didn't think about that, so. 
with the context that Jody has Stone Edge, it's a it's a like high risk, high reward move because if you miss, like I'm pretty sure you just lose turn one. Um or you don't lose, but like you're in a really bad spot, right? But Jody's play here actually gives him like a really strong like damage trade. And Gardevoir is going down to two turns of sand now, right? So like it gives you a bit more flexibility there. So you really only have to outlet like live one more moonblast. Um not Megging Charizard obviously is really smart because the weather didn't take away the sand. So, you know, obviously Tyranitar is not taking that much. So I actually, I really like Jody's turn one play. I, I think this is weird for Seijun because it's like, did I really have a better play there? Because like I have the chance of like potentially sniping the Zard or like catching something for a bunch of damage in the back. So like I wouldn't have necessarily like minded Seijun's play if I were playing from Seijun's position. But Jody's done a great job of like dealing with the otherwise unfavorable lead, I think. I think here, oh, also they have like a tweets popping up in the bottom right from like uh, people watching the finals. That'd be really cool if they had that um, again. But like they have to obviously bring it in like a more, like a better way. I think it should be something that's like maybe in the in-between screens or something. Okay, what do they do here? I like. I feel like here, like, yeah, you swap out in the Rotom and then you swap in Mance probably and then you let the Gardevoir die to sand. Yep. I like the play. Honestly, if you're Sajin, though, this is, like, a pretty easy play to call out. Like, probably clicking Moonblast and Rock Slide in the Zard always guarantees you pick it up. So, like, it's just a pretty safe play. Um, I'd be... I, I actually don't remember this match fully. So, like, if he doesn't do that, I'd be surprised. Because, like, it's just a very easy pin. Yeah. Then you have the Haban Berry as well, right? So... Yep, okay. Moonblast, keep the slot honest. Okay, I get that. That's fine, I guess. Oh, see? Okay, so so he called out. So here, right, he was calling out that, like, okay, you're going to swap to Ments. But I feel like in that case, if you know they're swapping the Ments on that slot, then you know that, like, Tyranitar is probably going to swap too, right? Because then they're going for the basic play. So I almost feel like Moonblast and, like, Rock Slide would have been better here. Um, That being said, I guess, like it's you're still like getting the damage you need on the Mets. The problem is is like you're in a way more compromising position that being said though i guess you have the paturisu in the back so you can just redirect see this is where moonblast would have been really good right because then Mets would have gone down you would have been in a better position I mean, Jody's playing amazing, I think, here. Or at least he's done all the plays he's needed to to put himself in a better position than Seijun has. And I don't necessarily disagree with any of his plays. I think his plays in this in this case are really good. <laughs> he's probably thinking he's like damn it what do i do see honestly talon flame coming out here wouldn't be a bad call either i guess you are pressured by men so maybe you can't okay there you go pop Teresa comes out um <sighs> Okay, so here's the thing, right? So Paturisu actually does give you a redirection, which is good here. I don't think Seijun's running Swords Dance, though. So it kind of makes this very tricky. You could, like, protect Nuzzle, um, protect Super Fang. You could go just for Follow Me and attack. Like, you have a couple options here. I think probably, like, Nuzzle Protect is good. Tyranitar comes out, yep. At that point, you could sack it, right? He's just stacking it for the Dragon Claw. No, he goes for Rock Slide. Okay, that's even that's fine. Tyranitar like dodges, but I don't actually know if that's like that impactful to the game. I just think it's like kind of like a yeah, you know, it's just kind of like a whatever. Leaf Storm comes out. Patrick eats up. That was a lot of damage actually. So the thing is, is like obviously Tyranitar, if it's Scarf, it probably has Ice Punch here. Because um, back then it was a distribution event. Tyranitar didn't commonly get it. But if you have the Cherish Ball on it, it's usually the event Tyranitar. Um, so it was Ice Punch in this case, right? So like Seijun knows that. At least if he did his homework, he knows that, right? So like this is a pretty free follow me from Seijun, I think. The, the tricky thing here for Jody 
is do you click ice punch anyways or do you swap in the ments knowing that they're going to call it right here i think he's gonna, yeah like I, I like protect actually from zaydun as well you can follow me you could also just yeah that's that was a really good play as well I think, honestly, if I were Jody here, probably Stone Edge into Pachirisu would have been better. So, like, okay, so here's the logic, right? Like, I think Seijun is less likely to protect the Redirector. Plus, you have such a lead anyways. Let's say you get the turn wrong and, like, Pachirisu protects. And uh, Garchomp goes for, like, a Earthquake, right? Or it goes for, like, a whatever. Like, something that kills your Tyranitar. Then you get Immense for free. And then they're already in a tricky position anyways. Because then you just Draco kill the Pachirisu. And then you Wisp into garchomp they just lose right um that being said talonflame in the back's a threat too and you'd have to cycle men so that could get awkward so i could see like ne like maybe where you'd want to just click ice punch to like force force like the honesty on the turn but now i would guess that J like jody's like in a worse spot now <sighs> maybe like stone edge and the pachirisu and like swap in immense would be good here and then you just sack off rhythm later um that, I think that probably would have been the best play, actually, coming from Jody's end. Because, like, there's no way Dragon Claw goes into the Rotom anyways. Rock Slide at that point, like, doesn't really matter. Because you're just using Salamence as, like, Intimidate Spam. And then you're setting up for your Charizard to win, right? So, I could definitely see that being, like, an option. Also, too, if you take out Pachi, Pachi there, and then you just uh, have Stone Edge pressure. Like, Talent Flames forced to target into the um, Tyranitar with, you know, like, some move. Or, like, yeah, it has to target with Brave Bird, actually. Because, like, that's the only way you KO the Scarf Tyranitar. And then you, like, obviously you can just, if you're on Jody's end, you can just swap out the Rotom into, or, like, swap the Mence into Rotom again and then cycle in Mence a second time. And then you're just winning versus that. Like, you're not winning versus that. But, like, you could actually bring in, uh, you could bring in Zard and then bring in Mence and then swap the Rotom and then bring in Mence again. I digress, but, yeah. Hope Dragon Claw comes out. That was the probably cover for the Mence coming in. Wisp, yep. No, Ice Punch comes out, yeah. You click it again. At this point, you just click Ice Punch again if you're Jody, right? To be fair, like, this is not really a bad position for Jody. I think, honestly, here, what you could do is, potentially, is, like, bring in Mence for Tyranitar. Um, or bring in, like, uh... Do you do that, though? I guess you're putting a kind of a risk on it. I mean, I think realistically, though, like, Jody is in a better position here as long as you don't fumble um, the last few turns. But, yeah. It's probably a Rock Slide coming out from Sage in here. Or a, or a swap? Do you even want to swap here, though? I feel like that's so risky. I mean, it's probably Leaf Storm Ice Punch. Oh, yep. There's a swap. You're resetting the chomp. That makes sense. Okay. Protect two. Yeah, protect's not bad. Um, Leaf Storm. Yep. Ice Punch. That is... That's rough. Okay, so the freeze is humongous, right? Like, obviously, on a Jody Zen, that's, like, really lucky. Um, And Seijun was probably, like... <laughs> he's probably, like, what the hell, man? Um, that being said, I think that realistically, like, CG is already in a bad spot here. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of tricky, right? Um, I think, like, realistically, I could see, like, if it thaws, right? Like, then it's able to just come back anyways. And, like, that's what you're playing for if you're Sage. And I, I don't know if there was a better play. Like, do you leave Chomp in there? I don't think so. Um, well, okay, let's, let's play it out in our head. Like the situation on our head. You protect and you go for a dragon claw. You kill men's or you kill Tyranitar. Um, then men's comes in. Then you kill Rotom, like Rotom with the dragon claw and you go for the nuzzle in the Salamence. Oh yeah. You still lose that. Okay. Yeah. So you have to swap like Seijun absolutely made the right play by swapping. You have to keep Chomp alive a little bit longer.
Hopefully you guys don't mind, by the way, that I'm, like, breaking this down in depth. I know it's, like, probably gonna be a bit of a longer video, but, like, I want to do it justice, too, while I'm watching and kind of, like, talk through it with you guys and, like, talk about how I see it from my perspective, right? So hopefully you guys find this, like, <laughs> interesting. Like, let me know if, like, in the future with these kind of videos, you'd like me to, like, spend less time talking over, like, the turns. But, like, I feel like it makes it, like, more interesting, right? Yeah, I think Seijin just has to go for Thaw, right? Like, you just try and kill the um tyranitar maybe no you have to yeah you okay there you go he thought out okay so like seijun literally is like hoping for a paralysis here um i feel like follow me would have been the better move personally um because you're already going for the overheat anyways to kill the rotom because you know the tyranitar is locked in the ice bunch oh it's life orb okay it's life orb on talent that makes a lot of sense so just so you know if uh jody doesn't get paralyzed here and he ice punches talon um it probably dies and he wins like on the spot uh that would have literally been i think an instant loss um for sage in there um because of the paralysis it completely shifts the dynamic of this game but if ice punch goes into this talon and the game's over for sage because you just don't have enough in the tank to win because then because like let's let's put it this way right so this is what would happen um like mance would come in right and versus chomp because there are two ko's this turn basically um, Mence comes in versus Chomp. Uh, it intimidates. You can either swap it out, right? Or you can just Draco Meteor if you want to keep the slot on this and Ice Punch. I think you swap and you Ice Punch. Or you Protect and Ice Punch, right? No, actually, how do you how do you go about... No, you just Draco. Yeah, you literally just Draco. If you Draco Ice Punch, there's no way Sajun can cover that unless he flinches you. If he flinches you, then you lose, but... <laughs> So, like, it wasn't over for Sadrian, but, like, it was pretty bad, right? Like, he would have to rely on Rock Slide flinches. But, like, the paralysis puts him in a much better spot. I actually think it puts him in a winning position. Charizard comes in, then you have to play Swap and Ments, hope that you, um, hope that you survive, get the Heat Wave off, and potentially burn. That would be ideal, but it's too much to ask. So, like, I mean, you could argue that Sadrian got lucky here because, like, he unthawed and then like obviously the tyranitar got paralyzed but also like the initial freeze was pretty lucky so like i think it balances out that he unthawed and it's basically like the freeze didn't happen right the paralysis like had a decent chance of happening so you can't necessarily say like that was luck but like it was definitely unfortunate for jody right like it changes the course of the game for sure that being said sajun definitely could have still won anyways so but it was like it was like pretty much neat guaranteed game losing for jody yep swap out and then you go into men's and you go for the heat wave. I think if the Zard was bulkier, it had a chance. <laughs> but, like, it's not bulky enough. I wonder if swapping is the right play there. Or maybe just, like... Okay, so, hear me out. What if you just went for a protect on the Zard? And then you let your Tyranitar go down? You get Intimidate. I feel like that might be better. To me, that actually makes a little bit more sense, but... Yeah, he was he was playing for the fact that like they were going to. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and now that's gonna connect and kill Lazard. Okay, yeah. So it was tricky. I I don't think this was easy for Jody at all. I think that like realistically though, you want to save so the Mens comes in. But I guess it would have gone down to Dragon Claw, which is why he didn't want to do that. Okay, yeah, so the reason why I think, like, it would have been better if it was um, Protect and then you Mega and you attack next turn is it forces Sadrian into this mind game where basically it's like, okay, does he Rock Slide and Brave Bird into Zard and risk the Ments Draco Meteoring, right? Um, or, like, a Protect Draco Meteor, rather? Or do you Dragon Claw into my Ments, right? Um, and go for a Brave Bird into my Zard, but then if I protect my Mens, you lose, 
because there's no play that can cover that from Seiju then. Like, you have to make the call on the protect. And I think in the position that Jody was in, it was better to go for the mind game than it was to go for the, um, was to go for the swap, right? So. So, uh, with that extra damage there, he does feel very safe that even intimidated, Talonflame could take up this, uh, clan dart that he needs to. He's already seen that this- but Yeah, that's pretty rough. All right, so Sager wins game one. <clears throat> okay, so on Jody's end, right? You obviously adjust to the lead from game one, right? Like, you, there's no way you're just going like, to like lead the same thing and just lose. So, Okay, so this adjustment from Jody is insane. Like, this is really bad for Sager on lead, right? Because he has back Talon Flame, back Pachirisu, we're assuming, right? So... This gives Jody bullet punch pressure, which should kill Gardevoir. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say should, because there's some context here um that I'm gonna explain in a second. And Draco Meteor just goes in the chomp, and then like chomp is down the sash, and that's it, right? Like game game's literally over, you know? Um and then like even if like for some reason like Chomp, uh, you know, like obviously Chomp like flinches Salamence even with a rock slide, like it's not enough, you know? Because the uh, Gardevoir went down. And like there's no intimidate from Sage and Ten. Uh, I think this Lucario adjustment was 100% the play, by the way. I think this should have been game one. So, Blood Punch comes out here. Okay, so just so you guys know. So, the roll on this, I think, was like 90% or like 87% for Jody to kill. We talked about this. So, I went out to like dinner with him after like a local in New York. Um, and like him and a few other people. And he was literally, because we talked a little bit about this match. And he literally told me, he was like, yeah, Sajun's like role to live this was like, it was something ridiculously low, like six or 12%, right? So like, um, Jody got pretty unlucky here. I think if he just gets a KO here with guard, like on the guard of war, like the game's just straight over, right? Um, because then Draco Meteor comes out, there's nothing you can really do to stop that. And then, you know, that's it, right? The game's literally done. So uh, even, he even from here, I guess Jody can still play, play it out. But like, you know, obviously it's like way worse. And Gleam coming out here is devastating, right? Because the match just takes so much here. Okay. Okay, so this was a big mess up in my opinion. So what I think, what I think he was going for, I actually don't. Don't really fully understand what the play was here. I I just think uh, Dra uh Draco Meteor was better here, right? Because if you Draco Meteor, um, and maybe it was for the Tyranitar on the back. No, but Tyranitar would Scarf out speeds that. Yeah, I I don't know. I I feel like here if you Draco Meteor, you're still in a fine position if you're Jody. So maybe Jody also threw a little bit because I think if you go for a Draco here, you're totally fine. And like Sajin can just click Dazzling Gleam again, right? Like there's no drawback. I think if Jody clicks um Draco Meter, he's totally fine. You go for Rock Slide flinches here, probably. <laughs> if you have it. Yeah, that's pretty rough. Probably swap the Pachirisu, right? And like an attack. Protect. I just think like here the problem was is like there was just too much done. I mean he goes for an ice punch here. I'm I'm sure right. Oh he clicked rock side. Yeah okay so if if Jody clicks ice punch here and then Gardevoir goes down the sand, it's actually pretty doable. But because he went for rock side, calling the swap. Uh, it's like kind of like curtains if the Tyranitar gets to attack, right? Like if the Tyranitar gets to attack, the game's just kind of over. Um, if Tyranitar um gets the flinch, it's like obviously fine. Um, but yeah, it's like pretty rough, right? Because like you're taking a bunch of damage for free on the T-Tar. Okay, so 
Yeah, Earthquake coming out is just like really bad. The problem is though is like now it's just rock side bait, right? And like Talonflame definitely comes in here. You just win. I guess you could bring in uh Pachirisu as well, but like Talonflame's definitely optimal. Yeah, if Ice Punch came out here, it probably would have been way better, actually. I would have been interested to see what that game state would have been like. Talon. Oh, Pachi came out. Um, That's fine. I guess you can just follow me, Rock Slide. I, you are risking a flinch, though, so I feel like maybe bring in Talon. Because... Okay, so if he had Talon in the back, right, he could have just brought it in and gone for a Brave Bird into Tyranitar, and it could have been a um, Dragon Claw into Ments, and that's pretty safe, right? I mean, at this point, right, like, Jody's in a really, really bad spot. I don't think there's, like, any way Jody can really win this, besides, like, flinching a ton now. But that's because, like, Sajin kind of gave him the opportunity to do that, so maybe, like, Talon Flame isn't in the back, but... You literally click rock slide here and just hope you flinch. <laughs> like that's what he's going for, which you have to. If it's a flinch, you're fine. Okay, yeah, it's literally up to a flinch. If he flinches, this is very much still a game. Oh, he doesn't, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's curtains. So, like, it, Jody literally went for what he had to, I think, in this situation. Seijun kind of gave him the opportunity, and I don't know if that's because Seijun had his... Like, I yeah, I just don't know if Seijun had the um, talent in the back or not. I guess, like, there's no way to know. He might have said it in his report or something. But I think he gave Jody like an out here, but it didn't really matter, right? Maybe he just wanted to flex the Pachirisu. I don't know. But yeah, like Rotom just loses now, right? So uh, I guess overheat miss, <laughs> right? Like you just go for a Leaf Storm, then you go for a Thunderbolt, overheat misses. You maybe get a Paralysis, and then, you know, crit the Chomp with Leaf Storm, maybe. Oh, yeah. Yikes. Pachirisu is pretty fast, actually. Oh, you got the credit. Okay. But yeah. You know, it, it's so funny because, like, I always see this after World's Finals. Like, it must be so devastating to, like, lose in finals, dude. Like, it, I would be so sad, dude. I Like, I have so much respect for some of the players who, like, sit here and, like, lose because it's like dude like that really sucks especially in finals it's like because everyone thinks it's their story right you're like always like oh yeah it's my time to win you know what i mean like this is my final challenge and then like you actually end up losing um i think wolf actually talked about this a little bit in one like one of his videos when he was like reacting to like a world finals he was already like yeah like he's like i knew how it in me to like lose again <laughs> i was like it's like damn bro like <laughs> you know but like it's true you know you obviously have that like pressure and you think like you're gonna win but you can definitely lose you know um for Sajun, I mean, I think he definitely, like, there, there were some plays in there that probably could have been better, but I also think he did a good job of, like, punishing uh, Jody when, like, he got a bit unlucky, right? And also, to like, he put himself in those positions to get a little bit lucky as well, so I don't, like, I'm not taking, necessarily taking that away from him. I think game one, uh, Sajun was definitely favored regardless. Uh, if the Ice Punch Freeze didn't happen, he for sure was super favored. Um, because of, like, the situation he put himself in, or at least, like, he was a little bit more favored than Jody was uh you know game two obviously jody got like pretty unlucky i think this very easily could have been a game three series if like or like a you know three game series if like that hadn't happened but like that happens you know what i mean like that's pokemon it's really interesting looking at this back in retrospect too because like you notice all those little small things i didn't necessarily notice the first time uh i had watched this all a long long time ago so and like interesting enough this actually isn't the f world's finals i'm most familiar with i'd say probably 2017 or 2018 is the world's finals i'm most familiar with in terms of, like, everything that happened, like, knowing all the turns and everything, because, like, those are the ones I watched the most. So, like, going back and watching this one is really interesting. I mean, VGC is such a... It was such a different game back then, and it's changed a lot um, nowadays. So, definitely, like, 
changes up. I mean, this was a truly iconic moment in like VGC history, right? Like this is something that like shaped uh competitive for the next few years and like a big event that people talk about even now, you know, like people still talk about this Pachirisu today, you know? Um, and that's like really crazy. So like, I'm sure Seijun like definitely is happy that he's like <laughs> probably the most memorable world champion was it's like save Wolf maybe and Rizzo. So yeah. I mean, like, even even Jody, yeah, he, like, shook his hand, you know, like, and it's, it's a good sport, you know, like, that's what you gotta do, so. But, yeah, no, um, I mean, yeah, it's kind of like that tale of, like, the expected winner wins, <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, um, you know, like, how a lot of people felt in, like, some other world's finals, right, like, 2016, Wolf versus John, you know, like, people were like, okay, like, yeah, Wolf probably wins this, because, like, he's a more experienced, but, like, usually ends up being closer than that, especially when, like, someone has already proven they can already get to that point in worlds, so. Yeah, it's definitely really interesting, and it was a cool thing, I think, in general. Uh, I think that, in general, like, Seijun's world's win is truly, truly an influential moment. So it was really cool. If you guys enjoyed this kind of video, let me know in the comments. Uh, let me know if you guys would like to see me react to other, you know, VGC finals, anything else, matches in the future. Um, and let me know if you guys would like to see this content more in general, because this is something new that I'm trying. And I just want to see if this was something that you guys would actually, um, enjoy. So once again, guys, thank you so much for all the support. Incredibly appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.